The event loop is one of the most important aspect to understand about Node.js. So why is this so important? Because it explains how Node.js can be asynchronous and have non-blocking I.O. The Node.js JavaScript code runs on a single thread or you can say on a single process. There is just a one thing happening at a time. The most browsers, there is an event loop for every browser tab to make every process isolated and avoid a web page with infinite loops or heavy processing to block your entire browser. So let's take a look at a very simple example to understand how event loop work in Node. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just simply create here a constant variable and specify arrow function to it. And in this arrow function, I'm going to specify console.log and print bar. Arrow function were introduced with ES6 as a new syntax for writing JavaScript functions. This is just a simple function and I'm going to just specify this function to this bar variable. Just out of that, I'm going to create another arrow function and specify a different name to it. Here I'm going to specify bars and I'm going to specify console.log with the message bars. Just out of that, I'm going to create another arrow function and specify foo variable to it. And then I'm going to create a body of this arrow function and inside this arrow function, I'm going to first call a console.log and then specify foo message. Just out of that, I'm going to call this bar function just out of this console.log right here. And then I'm going to call my simple bars function, this one, just out of this bar function right here. And then I'm going to simply call this foo function. So here I'm going to say foo and then specify parenthesis. Now you can notice this is just a simple JavaScript code. We created a simple arrow function and specify console with a message. And then here I'm going to just call a console.log and call both these functions. At the last, I'm going to just call this foo function. Let me just save the changes and execute this file. When I execute this file, you can notice I have the result something like this. This will just return foo, bar and bars. When you run this code, first foo function is called. Inside foo, we have this console.log. So the node will execute this console.log, then call this bar function. And then inside this bar, we have this console.log and print this bar on the console. Just after that, we have this bars. So this will just call this function bars and print this console.log on the console. So you will have the result something like this. You can notice all these functions execute one by one from top to bottom. When you call foo, it will just call this foo function, then print this message and call both these functions one by one. So this is what we call a call stack. The call stack will take the function and execute it. So when you execute this file, a call stack will put these functions in a row or you can say in a queue and then execute it one by one. The event loop continuously check the call stack to see if there is any function that needs to run. While doing so, it adds any function call it finds to the call stack and execute each one in order. The call stack iteration start from the calling foo. So this will first call the foo, call this bar function, then the call stack will execute this bars and we're going to have the message something like this. This process is happen until the call stack is empty. But sometimes node programs are not that simple. A node program would have a function that would delay the execution process. This example looks normal. There is nothing special about it. Here the JavaScript just find things and execute it, run them in order. But what if I add a function that execute after one second or more? Let's see what happens if I do that. So what I'm going to do is instead of this bar, I'm going to just call here set timeout function. So here I'm going to say set timeout. And as a first argument, I'm going to pass this bar function and then pass a millisecond 1000. So this will execute this bar function after one second. So let's see what happened if I execute this program. Let me just save the changes and execute this program. When I execute this program, you can notice I'm going to have foo as a result. Then I'm going to have bars as a result. And at the end, we have this bar. So the call stack is going to execute this bar function at the end of this application. When the program is run, the foo is called. Inside foo, we have this message and then we have this set timeout function. To this set timeout function, we pass bar as an argument and we instruct it to run bar passing 1000 as a timer. So it will execute after one second. So let me show you how call stack execute this program. The call stack will first execute this foo function. Inside foo, it will execute this set timeout function. And as you know, this set timeout function have a timer. So it will execute after one second. 
Just after that, the call stack will move to the next function and execute it. And at the end, the call stack will execute the function that is causing delay. So when the set timeout function is called, a Node.js start a timer. Once the timer expires, in this case 1000 as a timeout means one second, the callback function is put in the message queue. Here you can notice we have the callback function bar. So the call stack will put this function in the message queue. When the process of this function is finished, the call stack will pull this function from the message queue and execute it. So you can notice here we have the bar at the end of the program. Now if you deploy your app, you don't want to create a function that delays the execution. This may add error in your code like undefined object or undefined function. I know you don't want to add any error because of the function delay. To save this problem, nodes provide promises. Promises is a way to execute a result of an sync function as soon as possible rather than being put at the end of the call stack. So every time if the function makes delay, it execute at the end of the program. To solve this problem, we have promises. We'll talk about all about promises later in this course. Next, we'll talk about what is callbacks.